Uh, welcome everyone. Uh, we're here to talk about components of a component uh, today. Uh, just a quick introduction about me. Uh, my name's Nathan. I work for the Department of Customer Service uh, for the 1CX program. Uh, anyone who's not aware of that, that's 750 odd New South Wales government websites being rolled into one single Drupal instance. Um, I've been working with Drupal for 17 years, I think. I think my first Drupal migration was Drupal 4 to 5. Uh, and I'm mostly infrastructure and back end. Uh, there's other people in this room that work for DCS as well. Uh, they will vouch for the fact that I cannot write a single line of React. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, so, just quickly some context uh, for this discussion. Uh, today we're talking about a component in the sense of what you'd find in a design system. So this is not a Drupal 10 component, like the components module that does one directory of everything, uh, or similar. It's not component like paragraphs or layout builder. It's not a component like a capacitor in an amplifier. Uh, this is the design system components, and that's just about styling and how it displays on the screen. Uh, so, let's go into how people think this works. Someone comes up with an idea, someone like me builds it, and it goes live on the website. Uh, everyone's happy. Uh, components released to the website are all good and dusted, uh, but no. Uh, we are the New South Wales government website. It takes a lot more work for a component than that. Uh, so let's go through how it actually works. So here's a workflow diagram of the steps we go through to build a component. Hopefully, uh, you saw the last one started with an idea. This one, hopefully in your case, starts with a problem, something that actually needs solving first. Uh, the next step is the idea, going with the design team and working out how we're gonna solve that problem. Uh, there's the design itself, so we use Figma, working out the design, building the design, that kind of stuff. Uh, it goes to a working group, so the designers have come up with a couple of ideas, they go to a working group, they talk about that working group, they work out what the best design for us is going to be to solve the problem. Uh, the design then goes through user testing and gets refined and checked and updated and whatever needs to happen. Uh, and then finally it goes to approval. That's six steps already, and we haven't actually got to building it yet. Uh, there's content modeling. So how does that design then fit to, into the website's content model? Uh, can we reuse what we have? Do we need to build something new? Do we have to add new features? Uh, we have to go through that analytics team, uh, work out what kind of things they want to track for that component. Uh, personalization team, what parts of that component are going to get personalized? How do we want to use it specifically for users? Uh, and then finally, solution design. So we've got all that information now. We know how to do personalization. We know how to do analytics. We know how it maps to our content model. We've got a design. We've user tested it. We can finally work out how we're actually going to build it. Uh, the next step, build it. Uh, so the Drupal component that we talked about before, the one directory, twig, HTML, CSS. Uh, how that maps into paragraphs, how that maps into block content, building a React component as well, because basically we have one for one parity with everything, React and Twig, so that we can build apps in both. Uh, unit testing, the style guide itself, doing functional testing on that component so that we know it doesn't break over time, uh, automated visual testing so that when we make a change we don't break other parts of the site. Actually confirming our accessibility testing, making sure that the thing we built and got all checked in the first place actually works the way we expected it to. Uh, building training modules, writing documentation, and then finally we get to go live. <laughs> um, but we'll go into a bit more detail. Specifically on the Drupal side, we're gonna talk about these things. Uh, personalization, analytics, content modeling, and how we do them. Uh, I will take questions at the end, uh, but this is 
how the New South Wales government does it and how we get the best out of our teams. It may or may not work for you, but I'll just go through the process. Uh, content modeling. Uh, so we've got a semantic content model. What I mean by that is we've got this design component that shows links on a web page, but we've got six or seven design components that show links on the web page. The content model just tells the editor, I want links on a web page. I at this point, I don't care how it looks. I just care that I want links. So they build that first, and then they change the style, and they pick the different components from the library on how they want it to display based on the use case. Uh, we have landing pages, and we have, we have campaign pages, and we have standard pages. The content model doesn't necessarily match. So an example would be that on a campaign page, you're allowed three cards in a slider. On a standard page, you're allowed two cards, and that is it. Uh, and that comes down to how our content team wants it to work and how our UX team wants it to work. So we have to design that into the system. Uh, our database is crazy. Uh, for perspective, we have 1,300 tables. Uh, our revision table has 10 million records in it. So when someone says, I want to add a new field to a new component, then it matters. So we have to care about are we reusing our fields across our content model? How are we reusing them? Where are we using them? How do they fit into the design that this editor designer has come up with? Uh, and I'm having a bit of trouble with live demos, so I have to jump out of this. Uh, so hopefully it doesn't flicker too much. But just as an example, uh, what we've got obviously is the banner. We've got links, but then we've got this hero search component. We've got the links on the website in a three column layout. We have this featured component. Then we have featured news, which has kind of this left hand side featured news article, right hand side. And then more links and this uh, profile of the premier. Uh, th these are all separate components on the site. They're put together with layout builder users, do what they want to do. Um, the goal is just to get them to this point where the, they can compose the page as they need to, uh, that kind of stuff. So let me just jump back. Actually, maybe that works better. Can everyone see that okay? And then I don't have to do the stuffing around. Uh, Analytics. So when I said before we have to discuss with the analytics team what they want to track, uh, the analytics team knows better than we do about all the different stuff that their users want to see and do. So rather than us as solution designers coming up with, well, we want to track that action or this other action, uh, we obviously go to the analytics team and say, hey, what do you want to have a look at on the page? Uh, no, that's not working either. I don't have my notes now. Cancel that. Come on. Uh, so we go to them, we come up with this, we have this data analytics component equals thing. Uh, what we do is we add that to all of our components on the page, the specific elements that we want to track, uh, and then we hook that up with the data layer when we're designing the component. Uh, the, as I said, this is not working for me. Uh, let's go have a look at, so we have a development tool here. Uh, you can see the yellow outlines on the site there. That is all the parts of the component that the analytics team have asked to track. So we have development tools that say, uh, whenever you see this in the HTML structure, let's mark it up. You can see they want to track accordions. They want to track the keyword search. They want to track the links here. They want to track the tabs that are moving across. 
They actually want to track how many results that the user got. Uh, so what we do is we mark it all up with this HTML structure so that we can just quickly, and I thank Jess yesterday for saying integration tests are the best type of tests. We can just have a look at the page when we're testing it and go show me all the things that are tracking on that page. Um, and you can see it like apply filters button, clear all button, all that kind of tracking. Uh, one thing I did note, and I'll call this out to Ken who's sitting over there. When I was doing this testing, this button's tracked, but our language translation isn't. There's probably something we have to fix. <laughs> uh, so let's go back in here. Uh, the next one is SEO and personalization. Uh, this is similar. So as I said, we've got that component that generates links. It shows links on the page wherever we need to. Uh, the personalization team have ideas about what they want to personalize, how they want to use it. Uh, so as an example, the events on the home page might change from the city of Sydney to a regional event when you're coming from a regional area. Uh, so we do that with data attributes as well. Uh, in this case, it's data target equals. Uh, the reason we do this is so that rather than the personalization team trying to go through the entire HTML structure, find the element they want to change, whatever, they just go data target equals tag links. They find that element and then they adjust the links and off you go. Uh, the example for that, because I like making the screen flicker, uh, is, uh, and from an SEO perspective, because I've got this, I forgot to talk about it a little bit earlier. Uh, they also have things like the SEO team might ask for a bunch of attributes on the HTML that specifically outlines question and answer type formats for Google so that we get a better results. Uh, an example with that, of that would be we've got this heading text with collapsible with text. This actually has specific HTML markup on it, which is a question. And this has specific markup on it, which is an answer. So that when you get those Google search results at the top, you know how it says you might be talking about and here's some questions. All that stuff comes through. That's getting put in the HTML structure by that personalization team. Uh, an example of the personalization with tag links, transport projects, how demerit points work, things like that. When you land on this driving, boating, and transport page, these are all personalized to you. Uh, they're personalized to you based on whether you're local to New South Wales, whether you're coming as a visitor, whether you're a business person or a resident, all that stuff is coming through the personalization engine. Uh, another example would be uh, try this page link. So this link specifically has the data attribute on it so that the personalization team can adjust this link when you land on the page not found page based on your previous search history or where you are in the URL structure, things like that. Uh, so that's the SEO side of it. Uh, let me go back into here. Uh, page building. I talked about it before. Uh, we have, we need to decide where and how a component gets used. Something like the E10 fuel filter. Uh, that is specifically only for campaign pages. So we'll only build it for campaign pages. If it's something like an accordion, we will build it for standard pages and landing pages and React apps. Um, so, we go through, and that's where paragraphs and block content comes through. Uh, we have both, and there are pros and cons, as it says up here. Uh, but the pros and cons are the fields are different. The drop downs are different. There's slight tweaks between the two, depending on context and what we want the editors to be able to do. Uh, the next one, the style guide. So this one I'm going to talk about a bit longer. If you have any questions, just ask me. Uh, this style guide is kind of custom to our development process. Uh, the best way to think about it is the setup 
in a PHP unit test. Uh, as I said before, Jess's talk yesterday, uh, integration tests are best. So what we do is we have an entire process uh, that builds a page programmatically as if a user was doing it, but it does it as part of our build system. So what I'm saying is that, uh, let's say we have a links component uh, that has, so you create some URLs, you put it on a page, uh, and then you have variant one, variant two, so it styles slightly differently, layout slightly differently, different backgrounds, things like that. We do all that with a PHP class. Uh, and we programmed it such that if I change the PHP class, when I push it through the build system, the build system knows that the hash for the class has changed, so it rebuilds the content page. But it builds it in a way that it's actual editable content, it's an actual piece of content on that site, so it gets all of the analytics, it gets all the personalization, it gets put through our search API, it gets everything about it is done as if it's real content, but we don't have to rely on user content that they change and break our tests. Uh, we don't have to rely on that anymore. So we build all of this part of our testing system. Uh, as I said, it's programmatically created. It's automated as part of CI CD. Changes are detected and automatically upgraded at pages. Uh, it doesn't rely on user content. And now I'm going to do some demos. So here's an example of cards on our star guide. So you can see at the top here, Drupal star guide, a layout builder cards. Um, there's cards on here that have images. There's cards on here with red lines on them and cards without red lines. There's cards with what we call pictograms, and you can see color changes and things like that on it. We have white cards, we have blue cards, we have light blue cards, and we have accent color cards. And then we have all of the same cards on a gray background, and on a dark blue background, and on a light blue background. And the point of this is it's just a single page that takes that cards component that we talked about and puts it in every single possible combination that an edit editor could do so that we can test it. Uh, an example of this is ID supports password checker. I don't know if you've heard of this in the news, um, but it just shows you your password strength based on some API calls. Uh, but you can see we've got this on a white background and a light gray background and a dark blue background. But this one here, this would get called out because you can see just by looking at it that this line on a light blue background is an up to color contrast spec. So that's why we do it. A designer would come and look at this page, go through it all as part of their testing and go, no, nope, in that specific instance, I want you to make it Uh, so that's the style guide. Uh, just give me a second. Uh, as I said, because it's actual, because it's actual Drupal entities, they're editable by users. Uh, if the QA needs to go in there, they can go and make changes that they want to make, test that things are working. Uh, the system will detect that and rebuild it on the next merge request. So it gets reset back. Uh, the analytics team use the star guide. So they go directly to the page and check that they're getting analytics on everything they need to. The personalization team use the star guide. So they go on and make sure their personalization scripts are working on the star guide. Uh, the stakeholders themselves. So one of the problems we had was every time we do a push to one of our uh, branches, it would rebuild our preview environment. Uh, all that content that they were messing with got deleted, reset. Uh, now we have a page, we can say that page has your component on it and it always will forever. Go and have a look there uh, and it just gets rebuilt. So it saves a lot of development time and effort. Um, yeah, that's the style guide. 
Uh, next one is functional testing. The next step of that is, as I said, uh, the style guide is like PHP unit setup. Uh, we do that because we have Cypress testing on the back of that to do all the functional testing and make sure it's working as expected. Uh, but those pages are already there. We can literally point Cypress at all of the style guide pages and say, click this button, click that button, do that drop down, make sure that things are working as they expect to. Uh, we have moved to Cypress for transparency. So we, as I, the, there's the QA team, there's the personalization team, there's a development team, there's an analytics team, and having your, well, in our case, having all of our tests in PHP unit meant that they're really hard to be transparent to all those teams. Uh, with Cypress, everyone can get all the results all the time straight from Cypress Cloud, uh, and they know what page it was pointed to, they know what the results look like, they can see the videos, QA can update the tests, development can update tests, it's all fully open to everyone. Uh, we have 450 tests at the moment that run across all of these star guide pages. Uh, and just for those data boffins, uh, 450 tests run in 11 minutes across six concurrent threads. Uh, so we just bump up the number of threads when it gets slower than 10 minutes. Uh, and Cypress is, we currently have a beta test. Uh, it's a Cypress feature in beta at the moment, which is for every single URL you hit with Cypress, you can do the functional tests, but you can also get accessibility results straight out of that without any additional work. Uh, so we use those as well. Uh, how am I going? Oh, better be quick. Uh, visual testing, the style guide pages, there's 200 of them with different components, different settings. Uh, we also use that to go, well, compared to the last release and now, what has changed? Uh, we know that the style guide exists in both. It was built the same way. It's not user content. It doesn't change. So we can literally do tests like this. Show me all the stuff that changed on that page as part of the release. Who broke that padding? Uh, another one, this stuff was at the top and now it's at the bottom. Why? Uh, who broke things? Uh, i got a couple more slides. Uh, DOD, uh, the best way I can describe this, the definition of done is that task you don't want to do but someone said you had to. Uh, the training. So the first one is we use, we then have to go and create training so we create both LMS training style training with videos, but we also do live training as part of sessions with the training team on all the components that we create, how to use them, how to edit them, where to use them, that kind of stuff. And help hub. So we then have to write documentation. We have to write documentation for the editors. Like you can only use these type of links for this type of reference. Uh, and technical documentation which I will quickly show you. Here. So we do things, uh, this one's a little light on the analytics, uh, but it'll usually say why we're tracking which fields and why. Uh, the HTML, the React component and what all the different attributes are to the React library and which Drupal library to include. Uh, and we do that for all of these components, cards, filters, and down to the date, the error, the field set, uh, that kind of stuff, so that we can just point out and say, go for it. I will quickly. Next time I work out why PowerPoint doesn't let me just switch screens. Uh, as I said, it works for us. Uh, it is, this discussion wasn't a, we do it this way, you should too. It was more about, these are all the problems we had and this is how we solve them and hopefully it will give you something if you are experiencing some of these problems, some ideas on how to solve those. Uh, I'm around for the rest of the day, so please come and talk to me if you have any questions. Uh, and I'm on Slack as Enterbot. And the last one is questions.
Do we have time for questions? No. <laughs> uh, live on the site at any one time, there's about 40 to 50 editors. Uh, there's about 300 user accounts uh, on the site. So what do you use for visual testing? Uh, Apply tools. How much of your personalization and, um, and those extra pieces of flair that you've got on your site is uh, you know, open source or shared with you? Uh, so we do try and share everything we back that we can. So we'll go into building a component with the idea that the module behind it will go Drupal source, uh, open source on Drupal.org. Uh, one of the examples is data pipelines that we talked about last year. Um, where we can, we do, uh, but we're kind of limited by being government. Um, so yeah, things like we'll do improvements to modules that will help everyone, uh, and then we'll do a little bit of customization on top that we need to. Um, but our first point of call is to do it for open source first.